How's it going, YouTube? Mulligan's here. We are going to be checking how to get to Lokar. So, you know, I'll be doing the hidden quest with my dervish. And I've, I've in fact, like, started a little bit, but, like, there was some unfortunate thing happened, so I kind of need to restart the video, so I'll be starting from, like, halfway. But I'll show, like, the first steps as well, obviously. And we are going to be also talking about, like, how to fight him, what he's capable of doing, but if you would like to have, like, the technical... Our view when it comes to like all the numbers that he has when it comes to his defenses offenses you know damage numbers etc uh make sure to check out grim tools in the monster database if you if you write low car you'll be able to see what he's capable of over there so let's uh let's start going the first step that we will do is going to be in gloom mold and in the gloom mold right over there next to the npcs we teleport to so we need to do some sort of like a small quest right over here to be able to reach the, you know, side area that's going to start the Lokar quest, or the, you know, hidden quest. And that is going to be right next to the stairs down right over there. There's going to be like a small chest right on this corner, right next to me right now, this house. This small chest is going to be giving you a text. It won't to me, because as I said, like, I've just done it, like, 10 minutes ago, but unfortunately I had to, like, cut. After taking this quest guys you will be able to go to the second drift over here you could also run because like it's not that far away you look at the map we were just over there and we are supposed to run somewhere around here in fact so you can in fact tp to the second teleport as well the waypoint gloomwald crossing rift which we are in right now and we'll be running towards like southwest west a little bit Um, if you're doing this for the first time, there's going to be like a detonation site right where I am. You'll be also able to see some sort of like a, you know, quest marker, in fact. And you will need a dynamite to go through this road. There's going to be a one-shot chest waiting for you right next to this cart. So good luck with the drops. And in fact, if you keep on running, there's some sort of like hidden way over here through the branches. Which is going to lead you to your first clue, which is this guy right over here. Arcturus, some sort of like a ghostly or you know undead blacksmith only thing that in fact he can craft is called heart of darkness now heart of darkness is in fact the first item that you need to get the lock up um you're gonna need one ancient heart fifty thousand iron bits which is you know not not a big deal same goes for the consecrated wrappings uh always dropping and right i i think i have like thousands maybe you're gonna need to craft a black tallow on one of your blacksmith. I think it requires like three rift stones or something. I'm not really sure where to get the black tallow recipe either. It shouldn't be too difficult if you check it out from the Google. And you end up crafting this Heart of Darkness, and that is like the first step to start the hidden. Now the second step is going to be in Barrowholm. You will be going towards towards let let me put the minimap in the right location one more time so utp to borrow home and we are going to be going towards like this altar of ratosh over here towards like the northern side let's zoom zoom please excuse me if i'm like rotating my camera a little bit too much because i'm very used to it i've been playing grimdale for a very long time it's sort of giving you the capability of teleporting or like you know shadow striking to the corner of your screen like this all the time so if you put your corner to where you're supposed to go you will be able to shadow strike the furthest point at all times if that makes sense this is pretty much what i got used to um another thing that i should probably mention is going to be if you're interested in the character that i'm playing it's it's an eor dune and dervish i've recently made a build guide for it in my channel if you would like to see it it's, it's going to be on the top right corner right now feel free to check it out Alright, so never mind this guy, let's enter this rift over here. This is going to be the second necessary item that we need for a local quest line. And that is going to be right over there, guys. So if you if you have so far, if you know if you if you have the quest, or you know, if you have done these steps so far, you know, opening the blacksmith dude crafting the heart of darkness and approaching this right over here 
right about now, you will be able to get some sort of like a animation which is gonna spawn an an urn, I think. Somewhere about there. Just a small note, if you're nemesis with the Chthonians, I think Gravathol is capable of spawning here as well, so be careful with it. Especially if you're in hardcore. So, the urn is going to be spawning right over here. It is supposed to be spawning. When, once you destroy it, it is going to be dropping this item called Stormheart, which is going to be the second item that you're going to be needing. The Lokar quest on. Now, there, I will, I'll need to log out over here simply because, like, I don't want to walk walk back, teleport out. Which is going to be the third item that we need when you log in into Devil's Crossing. You can, in fact, go right by the edge of this, and you're gonna have a memento landing in your inventory. This is going to be the third item you need. So, from this point onwards, what you need to do is that if you have a character that has damage over time like mine and it has many procs, you really need to be careful about the next step. Simply because you will, you know, it's kind of frustrating. This is literally what happened to me while making the video. Because we are, we are supposed to find a monster or a mob uh, in three different spawn points. And I'll show you all spawn points. And you will need to kite this guy alive to the Devotion Shrine in Malmoth outskirts. Now, the problem is, while I'm kiting this guy, I'm leaving these poison puddles behind. That is literally killing him. In quite quick succession, that I should say. But what we're gonna do here is that, like, I'll actually, like, clear quite a lot of zone. Um, you know, a lot of monsters all around the place. Perhaps even... Perhaps even let's relog real quick and not open, you know, my, my companions. Because we definitely don't need them. I don't, I don't really know if it's possible for me to despawn my Blade Spirits and my Guardian of Empyreans. So, I'm going to be not spawning them instead, I would say. So, let's go to, um, let's go to Malmoth Outskirts. And I'll quickly show you where the, re like, where the spawn points for that dude. We need to guide. So one of them is right next to you, actually. It's in this house right over here. My cursor. So I think I think he's spawning outside, but I have been checking inside as well, just in case. The second tree location is going to be right over here. The corner of the map. So like I suppose that is southeast. The third one is going to be the southwest corner of the map. Right over there. Is a small guy called a uh, flame blue or something like that, but you know, it will be a little bit easier to show it to you once once we actually like He doesn't seem to be here, is he? I wish this road wasn't blocked so that I don't I don't end up pulling him. I think he's not there. Alright, so the first location is clear. What I'm gonna do from here, guys, is in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna just like clear the way. And as I said, like we need to kite him with the devotion shrine. I'm just gonna kill as many as I can along the path so that like we have some sort of like a clean path when I need to kite him. Because as you can see when my character is like close to the monster it is just dropping these like puddles and in box literally killing him. Right, so we are approaching here. This is one of the spawn points. Let's see if he's going to be there. We'll kill everything right here and maybe we don't attack anything else and we keep on running if he's there. I don't really see him right now. Yeah, maybe he's not going to be there. Ah, he's there. Alright, he came right underneath. So I'm gonna, like, stop pressing anything. I'm just gonna run. I wanna see if he's going to be following. If he's not following, I kinda need to kill these dudes. He's following. 
guy, top left corner right now. That is the guy that you need to kite. And hopefully he's not going to be stepping into that poison either. He's still almost full HP, so that's kind of nice. So where we are supposed to kite him is, I'm going to pose right here. If you look at the right top corner, guys, in this altar right here, you need to kite him. You're right next to the Devotion Shrine in the Mammoth outskirts. I'll show you the spawn points one more time, but there's also another very easy way to follow the screenshot as well. So once you kite him over here, there's going to be magically a portal appearing, and this portal is going to be up for the character that you just opened with um, all the time. So whenever like I relog to this game, this portal will be here at all times. So once you enter the portal, There is going to be somebody waiting for you over here called Bound Spirit. And he will be accepting the gifts. What are the gifts? It's these three items, basically. This spirit is gonna... When you give those three items, the spirit is going to be opening an ethereal rift that will go into that hidden cave that I was talking about that's also capable of dropping the um, the Dark One set. Not only the home of Lokar. So you, you get to keep the Stone Heart, in fact. That's, that's kind of a cool thing, I suppose. Like a guaranteed legendary right there. There's yet another Devotion Shrine waiting for you over here, if you would be interested. I'm not going to be giving a Skeleton Key. Right behind the Devotion Shrine, you will be able to access to the home of Lokar, which is also four cultists along the path. Something that I'm going to be telling you is that, like, be very careful here. And I would also check out, like, the... You know, um, the modifiers let's say of, of the place like this so we are marked right now i have like you know increased elemental let's say and total damage modified by eight but defensive ability is less so my defensive ability is kind of lacking in this case actually the rift claimed adherent is one of the one of the dudes that is capable of you know dropping dark one the other one is right over here so it's Four rift claimed adherents, in fact, that are capable of dropping them. There are four pieces in the Dark One set as well. Another thing that I'll tell you to be careful about is that these little... There's another one over there, but I'm going to be skipping it. We'll go into right over there. I'll actually like pause my game when I open my map, I suppose. Let's put north to the top as well. So you enter from somewhere around there, guys, and then you'll be able to come to Lokar from this, like, you know, blood... Lake, river, whatever you want, it's over here. And there's another branch that you can enter that is sort of hidden. But if you would like to farm the Dark One set, you have all you have already seen three of them. The Dark Turrens or something that they were called, Rift Claimed Turrens or something like that they were called. You have already seen in this video three of them. The fourth one is going to be, obviously, follow the road towards the right side, you'll be there. So you're going to need to, you know, reset your game, come back here. They don't necessarily have the highest drop rate, but it is, it is definitely target farmable. Um, the last warning about the place that we are about to skip is, is that there are these, like, little totems on the floor that are completely immune, sometimes even easy not to see them, and they're following you, chasing you, and they... They hit out of their minds. I think there's a fire, there's a lightning, and then there's a cold version. In my personal experience, cold version is the deadliest one, and they're very annoying. Try to try to be on the move. In this place that is that's, that's the easiest um, easiest thing to do in my opinion against them. So let's talk about Lokar a little bit. What he's capable of doing, what you can do to go go against him. Um. As I said at the very beginning of the video, I didn't necessarily, you know, tab out and like check out Lokar's every single ability or what exactly he does, how he does it, etc. Um, so I'll be speaking of my experience so far and afterwards we'll engage him. Once you destroy this big plant over here, it could actually be a problem as well if you're not capped with poison resistance or something, but you should definitely be. It will be opening the rift that will finally lead you to Lokar and um yeah he is he has some sort of like a cascade ability in front of him which is sort of shotgunning you uh try not to like run with this you know usually when when you're taking damage the first instinct is to like run away from from the enemy so don't run with the cascade that is like the deadliest thing that you can do so always like run around him or like you know um 
run away from him and on, on like a wind. And then definitely pay attention to your fire resistance and it's a bit of like armor, armor absorption and physical resistance is very important against him as well. He doesn't necessarily have the highest HP when it especially compared to the other celestials, it's definitely considerably easier. Um but if you don't really have that much HP, he can definitely destroy you. And if you don't have that much DPS, there is some sort of like a gimmicky mechanic in this fight that he will continue spawning these clones. Um, that can definitely overwhelm you, let's say. I, I didn't really have a character where it was having a hard time killing Lokar that I had to like kill the clones, let's say. So... If I have to guess, you will probably need to kill the clones if your if your DPS is very questionable, but that would be blindly speaking, so I'll leave it that to you. Um, entering here, you can definitely pop like especially if your you know maximum fire resistance is low, like me, like mine. You can definitely pop a flame drinking ointment, which is gonna give you a little bit more overcap. You can pop a royal jelly essence, which will give you a little bit more HP. And I'll also use an Ugden, Ugden Salve, why not? It's even more HP. So we will be sitting on like almost 17,000 HP instead. Uh, when you enter, this is, you know, familiar place. It's the Crucible. And he is the owner of the Crucible as well. There he is. Let's see our DPS. So those are the things that you're trying to avoid at all times, guys. If I want to really play safe as a Dervish here, I'm kind of curious, like, what he's capable of doing here. Yeah, he's definitely capable of damaging me. So if I want to play really safe here, I would just play around my Ascension. As you can see, he's also using some sort of, like, a Frontal Cone Breath. Some sort of, like, a Smash him, let's call it. He has the same ability as, like, World Eater. Uh, there comes one of the clones. And he also has some sort of, like, a Shadow Strike, I suppose. So, when my ascension is about to be over, I'm actually going to cluster and we're going to nuke him down. It's four more seconds on the cluster, it should be okay. He ends up dropping the gaze this time, and as you, you know, as you see, when you kill Loka, the, um, the clone actually disappears as well. And before you can exit, you can also go over here, just like in the Crucible, you will have a couple of chests waiting for you. And not that at all, actually. Like, they definitely drop most of the time two legendaries. Sometimes one, if you're very unlucky, I suppose, you're not going to get a legendary. And to get the full set of Loka, you'll unfortunately need to farm him quite a while. Um, You know, I think the chess piece is the difficult one to get to. But if you're lucky, that can definitely change for you. Most of the time, I ended up getting, like, Loka's gaze and the boots uh, all the time, pretty much. <laughs> and, and, and chest is usually the last one. That is missing a uh, piece of the puzzle. So, uh, about the Lokai set. It is, you know, it, it is considerably good when it comes to leveling, leveling alts. It is 100% worth farming this guy when you, you know, this is, if, you, if you're familiar with my, um, I can link this on the top right right now as well. If you're familiar with my, like, milestones video where I talk about, you know, when you make a first character, what I like these milestones that you want to hit, that you want to achieve, get to, let's say. Um, Lokar set is definitely one of those. You know, at, at the end of the line, probably, but it's going to be opening that much more possibilities for your account, and it will let you gain, um, you know, faster experience. It's 40% increased experience gain while leveling. Around level 40 to 50, if you pay attention, the armor itself doesn't have any armor at all, like armor value. And it has a chess piece, so chess piece is one of the... One of the locations that you're most of the time getting hit, it's 26% chance to get hit. So most of the time you'll be getting hit on your chest. The helm is 15% and then shoulders is 15 and the feet is 12. So that is, you know, additively how much of a chance that you will be getting hit without any armor at all, almost unless you do some like gimmicky stuff. Let's not dive into that so much, but it's possible to optimize your character in such a way that you will not necessarily need to remove Lokar set. 
up until like level 94 ish perhaps this is going to be yet another video that i'll be talking about later on um but if you're not going to be doing this sort this type of type of like a support where you will be you know getting a lot of armor from like other means you're gonna need to replace your loci set around like level what you could do however is that you can still carry the loci set around and um you know turn the quests in when you're wearing the set so you would be only missing the experience from the kills that you would you, you would you would have gotten yeah so i think this is going to be it from me i really hope the video is is going to be useful for you guys i'm doing consistent arpg content in my channel right now is path of exile and grim dawn later on there'll be last epoch looking forward to many other titles as well uh, I'm sure you are too so feel free to subscribe if you have enjoyed the video if you found it useful and remember to leave a like because it supports the video peace out dudes take care